Welcome to Top Line Hotline. Last week it was Black Friday. This week it's Thirsty Thursday. Thanksgiving Thursday, but one week later it is not Thanksgiving. It is different than that. It is Top Line Hotline. You know Top Line Hotline. It's that short, informative segment where people from all over the world send in their questions about how to do go-to-market right. And the hosts of Top Line, that's AJ Bruno, CEO of Quotapath, Austin Zaman, CEO of Sales Talent Agency, and yours truly, Sam Jacobs, CEO of Pavilion, answer those questions with thoughtfulness, with insight, with rigor, with the qualitative experience that is etched into their, the wood of their, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Sam, you, I got to say, you're the highlight. Voice. You're the highlight of my week. This intro is the well, highlight of my week. That's very sweet of you to up. say. Thank you. I'm very excited for was... like episode number 2,500 and like Sam's coming up with a new way to intro hotline. I get, get away from the Thirsty Thursday thing. I've done that a few times <laughs> now. But um, all right, I'm going to keep working on it. I'm going to keep practicing. Right. How do you get, Asad, quickly, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice. No practice, <laughs> bitch. Practice. <All> right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's jump in. Um, we have a question from our CRO channel in Slack, Pavilion Slack. And it's an interesting question, simple one, but interesting. At what point do you feel that startups are mature enough to define a sales process that works for them and ensures that it's followed across the sales org? Is it based on funding stages? Is it based on the size of the sales team? Is it when you hire RevOps or expand the enablement team? Or is it something else? Thoughts, Sam. <laughs> I love how you say it. I love how you say my name. It sounds like <laughs> I could be a ninja. It could be. I don't know if you're allowed to say that anymore. I'm a martial arts what? expert. Anyway. Um, <laughs> Enthusiast. No, yeah, exactly. Well, uh, the question is, what, stop, stop, say the question again. At what, what stage... Point, yeah. Yeah. So at what point do you feel that startups are mature enough to define a sales process and, in, and implement a methodology that's followed across the sales org? Should you do it by funding stage? Is I, it you, by, no, no, it's not by fund. It has nothing to do with funding stage or it has to do with the repeatability of the process. And I think that's somewhere between one to two million in recurring revenue typically, but it is kind of going to depend on your deal size. But I think... I seen so many early, super early stage, meaning sub one million ARR uh, founders and salespeople think that they have they should have like revenue targets for sub one million, and I don't think that you. I think that that's unlikely that you should because a model and a financial model and a set of revenue targets imply a level of predictability that is not supported by the evidence typically if you are still searching for product market fit, if you've got a mixture of big customers and small customers and haven't defined your ICP or segmented uh, you know, your approach in the right way. So I think the milestone is probably around a million in revenue. I, I, I think it doesn't make sense to put it, and, and you're talking about, the question was a sales methodology like medic, you know, making sure everybody's yeah. adhering to medic. I mean, Somewhere in the neighborhood of a million in ARR, it's not that you shouldn't use Medic. It's that you really need to be focused on other parameters besides just a qualification methodology at that point, I think. That's my answer. What do you think, AJ? And AJ, what do you think? Um, I agree with Sam on the stage. Doesn't matter. The, the very tactical milestones are around what you would consider founder-led sales going to where if you're the CEO or any founder and you weren't involved in the sales process at all, that is a good indication of repeatability and taking that. that methodology of that first AE, that first uh, VP of sales or whomever and getting them to write that down is probably the, like the most important thing. So just million, $2 million. I don't even think that, I think that that's a similar stage scale thing. Cause you could be doing two or $3 million deals. What if you have one customer for $3 million? I know that that wasn't the spirit of Sam's answer, but <laughs> since, uh, he's, he's currently frozen in time right now, I'm going to answer for him. I'm not frozen um, at all. I'm still here. Yeah. So I would say that you as a founder need to be removed completely from the sales process, get the person to write down what that sales process is and then repeat that one more time. 
with someone okay. else. So is that, it's like a teaching a fish situation. What do you and think? Do you th- do you think when a founder is moving away from founder-led sales, for them to feel that there is some repeatability here, it has to be more than one salesperson that they hire. So transition out of um, founder-led sales, hire two salespeople, get them to be able to repeat it. And then now you have some reason. Yeah, to I mean, it's just, I still fall, even in today's age, I still like to hire in classes, meaning don't just hire yeah. one solo uh, salesperson, have yeah. two that can learn off of each other competitive. I think that that's still... Um, it holds true today in today's world. What do you think? I agree with you in terms of when to introduce a methodology. I think the distinction I'd like to make for people is that there's a methodology that you're following, which is like kind of your system, right? But then there's also this idea of sales um, sales training. There's so many different forms of sales training. There's Challenger, there is Sandler, there's Spin, there's all of this. And where I've I've gotten with it is that there is no one that is the best. And so you actually want to have a methodology, but then train your reps to be able to pull the style of sales required in that particular moment. You're you're creating mixed martial artists um, that essentially the way you think about what you're creating is it's like jazz music. Jazz music has a structure and a lot of improvisation within it. So you're creating a structure with your methodology once you've gotten a couple of reps to hit target. And now you're training them to be able to pull what they need to pull in terms of the approach to the deal to get it over the finish line. That's how I think about it. That, my friends, is another great episode of Top Line, Hotline. So, not Thirsty Thursday, by the not way. Thirsty not Thursday. Thirsty Thursday. Thanksgiving is. Thursday. This yes. is recorded on the day before Thanksgiving. So, we wish everybody a happy Thanksgiving. Sam thought it was so good that he dropped off the call. He was like, He smelled this the turkey. Is my answer. Boom. I'm He's out. like, I fucking smell the turkey. Fuck this shit. I'm <laughs> out. And so, while he eats turkey, we bid you farewell. This is from Asad Zaman, CEO of Sales Talent Agency, AJ Bruno, the third CEO and co founder of Quarter Path, and Sam Jacobs, the turkey eating host of Top Line, founder of Pavilion. All the best, everyone. See you later. Thanks for listening to Topline Hotline.